In this video, we're going to focus on how we can color the X scale label ticks based on the value of the bar. For example, here, everything above zero will be green. If it has no value at all, which is basically the zero value, if it's equal to zero, it becomes red. And if it's a negative number, in that case, it becomes black. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to look how to color the scale labels based on the values in chart here. So the first thing what we need to do here is we need to get a border template, which you can find on chartgs3.com, getting started this specific link here, which you can find as well in the description box. So once you're on here, copy this chunk of code. And if you want to understand this code, make sure you watch this video here. So then I will just paste that in there. We'll cut this out and I will put that in here. Save, refresh, all right. So now we have this and what I want to do is I want to maximize the size of the chart, making this a width of 80%. So once we have this here, let's start to highlight or put certain items on zero. So let's say Saturday and Wednesday will be set on the value of zero. Save, refresh. So as you can see, and this was a specific question, if you have zero, could we highlight this or change the color on that? So let's start to work on that. So we're going to scroll down. And then within here, we're going to work on the X scale, which is the scale here on the horizontal level. So I'm going to say X and then here, comma. What I want to do here is I want to pinpoint the ticks. And what I really want to do is within the ticks, I want to say if the label, or sorry, if the value equals zero, then the label should become red or in any specific color you want. So we're going to do that one. To do this, we're going to work with the color. And basically with the color, normally you could say like this, and let's grab a color here. Let's say this beautiful color here, the red pinkish color. Save that, refresh. Now you can see here, this color works. However, this applies on every item, and we don't want this. So there's another trick, which is basically create an array. So we're going to put an array here, and let's grab the green color. That's this one here. So if I do this, comma, this, save, refresh now you have a sequence of red green red green red green but of course this doesn't work because this array creates a sequence but we want to make it intelligent so how can we create a understanding that if it's zero change it to red and else it becomes green so for that we need to basically adjust this but understand the logic of this array here this array logic is very important for us later on so let's go and work on color again. In this case, we're going to say here in the color, we're going to have here the context, comma, index. So basically those two here, and if I do a console log and just show you what this truly does, let's get the context, save that, refresh. Now the color is jumps to a default black color because it cannot find any color. So by that, me because of that, it will just default assign a black color. That's why it's not gray. Gray is a assigned color in Chart.js. So let's open up our developer tab and just open up this object. You can see here, we can see here all of these index numbers, which is basically the tick value, specifically this Sunday value number six, which refers to index number six and uh, index number six and everything else is self-explanatory. So we have those and those two items here, but this will not give us the access, because this is what we want. We want to have access to this data here to say, all right, how do we get this data here to confirm or to check what we can find? So what we need to do here is the following. I'm going to say, we can do it like that. We say a dot chart. By doing this context.chart, we jump basically one level up instead of this area where we are. And then we suddenly jump up to the very top level. The top level is basically this point. From here, we can all or navigate to every other object. So if I refresh here, you can see now, if I click on this, we have all of this information here. And what I wanted was in the data, you can see here the data object. Click on this, you can see it's a data object and you can see here the data sets. Then we open up on this and we can go here to the data. And this is the information we need. So with Chart.js to communicate within this part or from this part and then jumping outside of it, going a level up, for example, X, X, uh, of, uh, 
by having access, sorry, having access to the data. In that case, we have like that. That's what we're going to do here. And what we can do here now is just say dot data. Then we are here the data object. And you can see here in the data object, you get the data set and all the information that is necessary. So let's start to work on this. So what I want to do here, data dot data sets index zero and then dot data. If I do this, save this, refresh, you can see here now we have access to all the values that we have. So now what I want to do is create an array with a for loop, or sorry, not a for loop, but a for each loop for every item here to check are we having a value of anything higher or lower than zero or are we having a value of zero. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to say here, we're going to grab all of this, and this is the array, so we're going to say this dot for each. We're going to for each or basically loop through this data. So then we're going to say here for each of this, let's say a data point. And this data point here, what we will do is the following. We have this data point, we can say a comma index to get the index value. And then of course we have these double parentheses. And then we do a function arrow expression. And then within here, or just between here, enter. All right. Within here, we're going to do something. And what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to create an array. So it's a constant. And let's call this our ticks of tick colors. Tick colors, maybe, as array. This is a blank array. And then we're going to create in here in the for loop, if I do a console log and just say here data point, we should be able to see the value. We're looping through the value. And let's remove this. Save, refresh. As you can see here, we're looping through this independently. And although you see here many loops or many times because of the animation. But don't worry about that. That will not interfere with our design. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to say the following. We're going to say here, if the data point will be equal strict or yeah, equal strict zero. In that case, what I want to do is I want to say here, I'm going to get this tick color dot push. And what we're really doing is we're going to push a value in this array. That's what we're doing here. And as I indicated previously, why this array is important, this is the logic of it. So we're going to say here, let's get the color. And what is the color? Well, this is supposed to be the red color. So we're going to say this color here, put it in there. And then we can do here next else. If the data point would be, oh, sorry, it's else. So there's no need to do anything else here. We're just going to grab all of this. There's no logic because else would be, if anything else, in that case, give the green color here. I'm going to put that in green color, we push that. So once you did this, if I save this, you will see nothing happens yet. Why? We didn't return the value. So what we're going to do is we have to make sure we are outside of this for each loop, which is here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, sorry, no, this is the entire item. So we're going to say just here under, because this is the for each loop. Then we say here, return our array. And our array is ticks colors or tick colors. Save, refresh, and there we are. Now you can see here, it changes the color nicely based on the value here. If I add up a new value here of zero, save, there we are. But of course, as well, if you do a negative one, you will notice that it will become a green color as well. You could change this as well by creating here another if statement. If anything would be negative things, we could do that. Let's do that one as a final exercise. Uh, we're going to say this one. And what we're going to do here, I guess we can just paste this. We're going to say here, else if. We're going to make a new condition. And we should change the color here. And we're going to say here, if everything would be else if the data point will be smaller than zero. In that case, what we can do is let's grab another color here. Uh, let's get this blue color. I'm just getting the colors here. Of course, you can get any color you want. So then we should have now different situation. If I save this, refresh. All right, so I hope you're able to see this blue one here. It's quite tough to see. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the black color so you will see that immediately. Uh, make sure we have it all like that. Save. Refresh. So if it's a positive number, it becomes green. If it's zero, it becomes red. And if it's a negative number, it becomes black. And that's basically how you can play around with the scales. So if you enjoyed this video, maybe you want to change, for example, certain values here or different other options. In that case, I'm going to recommend, recommend, uh, recommend you this video here on how to customize the y scale labels in Chart.js. We have your start, low, medium, and high, which is also a different way of presenting values, but then in a text format. So I highly recommend it as well to explore.